Number one, you were saying about running to the Lord, into his presence, hiding in him when there is outer challenges, right? So one thing as a horseman that I'm looking for is for my horse to get to know me so much and know that I'm his home. I am his home. I am the one that provides love, peace and joy. Why? He is in a fallen world. He is a prey animal. There's like stuff out there that hunts him and tries to kill him, right? So there is no safety, but he has this illusion in his head that his safety is with the other horses, but it's not true. It totally is not true. Someone always gets eaten. So I don't want him to run to the other horses and ask them first. Because they have no clue, you know, they don't know. And all of them are not safe. But <laughs> there is no safety just in numbers or because they know something, right? His safety is with me. Mm. I am the only one who can keep him safe. So now I want to, can I say something about the bridle? Please. Okay. So, you know, especially for believers that, that do something with horses, because we actually carry the presence of the Lord. So we carry love, peace and joy. And that is the same that it was in Eden. And the horse still has an echo of Eden because he was created before the fall. It's somehow in his DNA. He hears this. He wants love, peace, joy. He does not want to be a prey animal, but he is, gets eaten hunted, etc. So actually he's looking for this all the time. Safety, peace, love, joy, a home, right? So he cannot find it in the world. It's impossible. He can only find it with me, like literally. So what's happening is why do we need to use bridles or bits? Or in my case, I don't use either, but I use maybe a halter and a rope. The two reasons, yes, is one reason is I might have to restrict the horse's freedom because if he has too many options, hmm. he gets completely lost. <laughs> he, he gets totally lost. So I'm just saying, no, 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 we go this way. Look, this way. Then he can calm down and everything gets better. Okay. Second, other people use it literally how it says for control, you know, because otherwise he doesn't, he goes wherever, right? But from, from my perspective, it's like this. It's a trust issue. Oh, wow. So when a horse trusts me, it means he, when he sees me, he comes to me. When he doesn't see me, he's waiting for me. When he, um, doesn't see me, he's wanting for me to show up. Then he comes to me, he wants to stay with me and be with me. It's about being with me, not doing anything together. And when he reaches this place, he does not need a bridle because he literally starts to follow my thought and energy. He goes where my thought and energy goes. I can stand completely still and ask a horse to do a canter circle at 40 meters or call him from 500 meters without moving my body. I call him in my mind. He comes, he hears it. No, no. So the thing is this, it has to do with self-protection. So when a horse is in self-protection, we must use a bridle. Wow. Because he is worried about circumstances in the horse world. It's just stuff like noise and other people and other horses and all kind of drama. So he's worried about circumstances. So he braces and he goes into self-protection. He's trying to keep himself safe. This keeps a horse very busy in the mind. He can't hear me, you know, he's just out there running around like a headless chicken and I need a rope or I lose him. He run in a truck and he dies. I have to restrict him or he's going to die. So I have no choice to use a bridle, right? But <laughs> what I would like him to do is learn to trust me and let me protect him, not operate in self-protection. Wow. And when he comes to this place, 
The horse lays down his natural self-protection because naturally they're afraid of circumstances and they're afraid of me, both. <laughs> they're afraid of my expectations and that they can't do it and it's too hard and what if, you know, uh, for real. <laughs> well, he's afraid of coming closer to me because of what I might ask or do and he's afraid of the circumstances. So he stays at the distance from me in self-protection, just racing around like crazy. So I need him to learn to trust me and come home. And that's all about rest. He needs to just stop running, come to me, rest and realize, oh, this is a nice place. This is good. And then in this trusting, when he lays down the self-protection, what happens is it's a mutual trust. I can trust him to take the bridle off. I know the only thing he will do is stick to me, look at me, ears on me, eyes on me. He wants to be with me. I can't get rid of him. <laughs> I sometimes say, no, please, I, how can I do anything here when you are like right on top of me? Please give me like one meter of you know distance. I don't have the problem with horses that they run away and I can't keep them here. I have the problem I can't get rid of them. <laughs> find that place. So in this is... He lays down his self-protection and only then, it's a fully yielded Eric. He chooses to fully yield to oh. me, me take control. And it's amazing because then he can become his fully yielded, a horse actually becomes its most powerful and is most beautiful. Because a horse is not beautiful with brace, it's ugly, you know? So that's it. That's my little input.